HDFS Hadoop Distributed File System So guys agenda for the day we are going to see HDFS introduction HDFS nodes two types of nodes are there for as we know master and slave and we are going to see demons its data storage pattern and we are going to see its basic architecture HDFS features where we are going to cover all the features of HDFS like fault tolerance, reliability and all then the most important concepts file read and write operations rake awareness then another architecture from another angle what is HDFS HDFS is a file system merely a file system okay now guys what was the reason it's just not only understand okay what let's understand why also why HDFS has been developed as a file system why storage inside Hadoop is developed as a file system can anybody tell me this why what was the thought in the developers mind to make HDFS as a file system rather than normal uh, uh, like RDBMS storage system the main reason is the to handle variety of data the main reason to handle variety of data you can store any type of data in HDFS you can means guys here when I show, um, will show, uh, show you the workshop exactly uh, we are going to see you can perform almost all the operations that you do on your local file system like ext3 like NTFS create directory delete directory copy copy data copy file change permissions and all so that's why HDFS has been developed as a file system it is designed for storing very large files yes as discussed it's not developed for small files the small file storage of in Hadoop will give you issues on a cluster of commodity hardware now Guys, this is the uh, main feature of HDFS that it can work even on the commodity hardware also. That's non-expensive, low-end hardware used for daily purpose. Uh, what is the requirement for a storage system? The, sto uh, the requirement from a storage system is the main requirement is fault tolerance, reliability, availability. Now understand the case on a commodity hardware also HDFS is providing me all such features means on mid end or high end hard, uh, hardware it would going to excel it is designed on the principle of storage of less number of large files another important point you should note down this HDFS is designed on the principle of storage of less number of large files although it can store more number of small files also small file means uh, mid-range files like uh, MB's GB's files but it is going to give you the best performance on the large files can anybody tell me why we have have now we are having a sufficient background to answer all the whys to distribute the data as much as possible 
to distribute the data as much as possible and to process the data as much as distributedly. Say for example, if I am having a very large file say of one terabyte, it would be almost uh, distributed across the complete cluster. Almost I am saying, okay, depends on some factors. If it is stored that much distributedly, it can be processed in the same manner. Third point, it provides fault tolerant storage layer for Hadoop and its other components. Guys, please note down again a very important point. While doing some R&D, you will come to know, okay, there is a Hive, there is a HBase, there is a Pig, there is a Flume, there is a number of components of Hadoop that are called Hadoop ecosystem. But guys, interesting thing is that all these components stores data in HDFS only. All the components of Hadoop ecosystem stores data ultimately to HDFS. So it provides a fault tolerant storage layer not only for Hadoop but also it's for its components. That's ecosystem. I hope all of you guys are having paper and pen with them. They are noting down the key points. At least note down keywords. These uh, things you'll uh, get um, all the PPs, all the material, although you'll get but keep noting down the keywords. Okay, let, I have got one question. Let me read it for you. Uma is asking, will single node HDFS system can have any fault tolerance? How Uma single node uh, can, uh, how it can have a fault tolerance? No. Single node can't have a fault tolerance. In next slide only when I will show you how node fails and uh, uh, how exactly fault tolerance is there, you will come to know without multiple machine, without cluster, fault tolerance is not possible. It is a distributed file system that provides high throughput access to application data. Okay. Again, the same point I am repeating. The second time, it is providing high throughput access to application data. Third time, I will show you when we are going to see the read, read operation, actual read operation. So guys, that is a, a, just a brief, a basic definitions of HDFS. What exactly is HDFS? You can understand from this. Just what and how, what, why, all such things we are going to answer now. There are two types of nodes. There are two types of nodes that works in master and slave fashion. We have seen this earlier also. Hadoop cluster typically has a single name node that is a master although it can be more as our cluster will increase it can be more and n number of data nodes to form HDFS cluster. So guys up to Hadoop 1.x we are currently having two versions of Hadoop. You can note down this. There are two versions of Hadoop. Hadoop 1.x that is a stable version. Hadoop 2.x that is still not stable. So Hadoop 1.x is having only one master and it can have n number of no slaves where n is less than or equals to 4000. For some of our clients, means when we deploy a cluster in that range, uh, I'm talking about uh, one and a half years ago. No, yeah, it's almost two years old story. Uh, we saw some issues. We saw some issues when we try to increase the number of nodes more than 4,000. 4,000 is a rough figure. What was the issue that we'll see but just as um, for your understanding just understand this in that way since there is one master a single master can't manage more than 4000 nodes. 
I'm talking about Hadoop 1.x. Now, so guys, um, we have raised uh, some Jira's with the uh, Apache and all that that happened and Hadoop 2.x started working by the way the same issue Yahoo guys were also facing so in Hadoop 2.x please note down there can be more than one master at a time there can be more than one master and number of slaves can be up to 12,000 nodes, 300% more. Now guys, another important point, master node is a single point of failure. Again, where in Hadoop 1 or 2? Can anybody answer? Where master node is a single point of failure? Correct Rajesh, correct Mahindra. Master node will be single point of failure in Hadoop 1. So if the name node goes down, the cluster will be inaccessible. Without your master node, slave nodes will be of no use. Without your master's data, that's called metadata, slaves data, that is actual data, actual data blocks will be of no use. So if the master node goes down, if the name node goes down, the cluster is inaccessible. If it goes on all the currently running jobs will fail all the jobs all the map reduce jobs all the work that is going on currently that will fail now on the other hand slave nodes are expected to fail at some point we can't say, we can't, Ms. Hadoop is having this assumption or this point pretty much clear that, yeah, since I am having thousands of slaves, if, since I am having thousands of slaves, there are chances that a few nodes or a few slaves may fail. That's why this is an assumption to build it into Hadoop name node will automatically name node will automatically re-replicate the blocks that were on the failed nodes to other nodes in the cluster I, I, I'm taking a question just just one moment so guys failure of these slaves will be automatically taken care by the framework and how it is taken care in next slide only I'm going to show you but yeah failure of slaves failure of data nodes will be taken care automatically by the framework uh, is there a rollback Uma I'm not getting a question regarding which you're asking if you can elaborate a little bit let's yeah let's let's take an example if you are doing uh, if you are running a job which will take an hour mm -hmm. okay in the middle of uh, 38th minute my cluster failed mm -hmm. and, and if I want to restart the job from where it will start it will rerun entire things if something it is posted and something happened no. already no, I and I don't want it to I happen. understand uh, what you are asking no uh, my question is are you asking when master goes down or when slave goes down master goes down if master, master goes, goes down, down then every work will be started from scratch yeah but there is already a half an hour work done yes it has to be rolled back no, no. and then restarted it should be but no not really there are possibilities so, there are configurations for the same that if in case uh, this um, uh, say for example any demon uh, this goes down 
in Hadoop 2.x especially, the latest version of Hadoop. Say for example, let's let's make it a little big. Okay. Uh, I am doing a work, I am having two petabytes of data. Okay. And I am processing that data and that is taking 10 hours to process. And at 9th hour, 9 hour 30 minute, my master goes down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do I need to do the complete work from scratch? So I would say in latest version of Hadoop, no. But in previous, it was an issue. There is a configuration parameter, but also that is all still buggy. That was buggy. Okay. So in the okay. latest version, so in, it will in, start from in, whatever to, point it stopped. So I do not need to spend another nine and uh, nine and half hour. Okay. I just need to spend another just thirty minutes. Oh wow, that is good. Yeah. So guys, uh, but, and but still there, there is the there is no roll back, point. right? Just, just, just one second. So guys, this is a very important point that you do not need to start your work from scratch. Okay, let me ask one question from all of you. Have you seen any system similar to this? Let's not talk about even master, let's talk about the slave. While working at any point of time, if your machines are crashing where your data is there, suppose here I'm having in on this slave, on this slave, uh, let me elaborate this right away only, because the same thing I, uh, I was thinking to discuss in map reduce, but since you asked, so, Suppose all of you guys understand my question. I am having this three slave cluster. Just three slaves are there. At any point, slave one goes down. On this slave one, I am having 950 blocks. What will happen to my job? I have the, the, the total job time was 10 hours. I have already spent 9 hours 30 minutes. And at the uh, say 11th hour, I need to give the answer give the result to my business do I need to go to my business and ask boss give me another 10 hours or what all of you guys I have answered from the perspective of master from slave please note down this please note down this now Another point, another question, the main thing that I was asking. Uh, they, by the way, there are very less distributed systems are there uh, in the actual systems. Uh, it's a big issue. Is there any system that can uh, provide us? Is there any system that can provide us such functionality that that is providing us uh, this functionality? Any legacy system? I haven't seen, frankly speaking. If you take any name, say for example, uh, by the way, these systems are usually single point of failure only if the machine is going down, uh, the complete system is down. Rajesh, Mahendra? Up to certain extent, Mahendra is saying, is... Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Uma, go ahead. Up to a certain extent, Cassandra has ability to handle the fault tolerance and because there is no master-slave concept there, no, no, it is active active question, clusters. No, no, no. My question is legacy systems. Cassandra is a uh, big data system. Right, right. Doesn't have, if it is, there is no real active cluster even in Oracle. Yeah. If that node goes down, you will lose some transactions. Correct. Some portion of data, some portion of compute time you will lose. Correct. And it will roll even, back, but even, in big data yeah, systems, it, I don't see a roll back option, correct? Uh, okay, l l let's um, understand in some other way. Uh, okay, so firstly, you uh, tell me how exactly it is getting rolled back. Simple example, I have like a, a table which will get updated sequentially every hour of my job running, uh, maybe 10 hours of the job what you have given me example it will keep updating the one table mm -hmm. so the result of that table maybe a sum of that column will go post into some of the share share market thing or something okay mm -hmm. if the job fails it will go post if that doesn't get cleaned up and say that okay the table does not have any entries that's one thing but if it has an inconsistent data in that it has to be cleaned up and mm -hmm. reposted correct 
You know what I mean? So Correct. if if it if it is not cleaning up, means cleaning up is nothing but rolling back. The transaction is getting rolled back. Correct. But what I am saying, such situation will never happen in Hadoop. Such situation will never happen in big data and Hadoop. Why? Because you will not get any inconsistent data. You will not get you will not get any situation. Your final output you will not get until unless the complete job will finish. So if I give you this example, understand this carefully. Important point, all of you guys. If this slave goes down at any point of time, my complete job will not fail. It's not like that uh, the, the, the one-third portion done by this slave, one-third portion done by this slave will be committed, will be written. Just that's it. My job is finished and we'll wait for this machine and when this machine will become up, then only my uh, work will go. No boss, no, not like this. What I'm saying, this machine, this went down, no issue. These two machines will take over. These two machines will finish the complete work. Omar? There is no such situation even. It is developed like that. You got got uh, the, the answer? No, if, no, no. If master fails, all, no, no, otherwise no. if uh, no, all no. three nodes out of them, two fails. Yeah, if they fails, then there will be issue, surely. I'm having, I'm taking the example, say for example, out of three, one may fail. Not if all three fail, then surely the, the complete system is down. And if the complete system is down, then it again it would going to fail your job or suspend your job. It's not like that job is half completed, half answer is written. Okay, so that whatever it is, so that there. See, uh, in this, what I'm trying to tell you is, uh, you know, in normal uh, transactional uh, database level or whatever it is. Because a lot of OLTP systems, OLAP systems, analytic systems are mm -hmm. transforming onto Hadoop, right? Mm -hmm. You might have done a lot of things. So let's take an example of an insurance company. Now they want to post uh, some, da they want to, they're building a dashboard, just for an example sake, okay? So they were, drill they, if they're drilling a job, the job runs for like two days or three days in a legacy system, it might run for maybe a 10 hours or uh, 5 hours in Hadoop system, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, uh, if you if you come to uh, like couple of banking systems, not not exactly this one, but uh, insurance wise, so there are some time bound limitations to the government to file it. If they if the numbers mm -hmm. goes that way, they have mm -hmm. to do it. If so that if that is not happened, so at least that should not go show a wrong number in the uh, table. So the exactly. table doesn't go away, right? Exactly. So the okay. table doesn't go away. So that that's my, that my concern is you know maybe. An engineer is taking care of it. If it is something is getting posted, like uh, see every, uh, let's take an example. I have one billion records. Every ten thousand records, once it is computed by one node, will go post it. No, 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 no. It's okay. Not, not like that. Not like that. Going in wrong direction. Understand this carefully. Understand this. Uh, I think you have made some misconceptions. Wait for some time then. It's it's you're you're thinking again from the typical perspective of a legacy system from a conventional things. It's still in your mind like uh, that that's still very heavy hold for some time how it's happening not like that some my 10,000 records here and it will be posted no 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 boss it's totally different from the scratch from its point of view from the uh, just uh, uh, what should I say it's development or it's a uh, basic architecture from its uh, principle is totally different wait wait for some time it's lots of misconceptions are still there I was thinking that you have uh, 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 got uh, from the basic, but just wait, 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 wait. Okay, yeah, not at all. I'm, I'm that my fault. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, rollback came from normal Oracle rollback. No, no. Understood, 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 understood your point, Miss. Actually, what happens to women is yeah. what I have seen, uh, especially guys who have spent 15 years uh, in the industry. Uh, they need some time to to really understand these things because what happens that they tries to map their current knowledge to understand big data things but the issue is that it's, uh, it's, listen, listen to me let me finish uh, the point is that uh, to understand it just try to understand it uh, from scratch don't try to map it because uh, there is nothing similar frankly speaking 
especially architecture perspective, especially processing perspective, storage perspective. If if it was a little bit similar, then it's it, it it wouldn't have called as a big data system or a new 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 generation system. And so don't take it otherwise. Why I'm saying this because I have seen the same thing for last almost four and a half years. And for me also, when I learned this five years ago, almost it's now five years. I also faced lots of issues at the time because I was again and again trying to map it with Oracle. Oracle I have considered as a, my uh, the, uh, the 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 base and the key thing, and then I was trying to do the the, the main issue people are facing to learn Hadoop is uh, this that they are trying to map again and again with Oracle. Leave Oracle side, understand this carefully. Then you will compare Oracle and Hadoop at the end. To all the senior guys, Mahendra, Rajesh, Santosh, I, I, I request this thing. Because otherwise uh, you will create some misconceptions. Oh, I have got lots of questions. Let me take this. Uh, Ashwini is saying, if any failure occurs in Oracle, normally we do not start from starting as we have autonomous transaction to start from where we fail we normally uh, don't prefer to do rollback to save time initially days uh, initial days we were doing rollback I guess uh, yeah Ashwini again our discussion is going towards Oracle but yes you are correct totally correct so it's like uh, four five years still five years ago we were doing some sort of rollbacks but now uh, it, it is handled Oracle is a little intelligent now and uh, I'm not talking uh, currently still, still as a Oracle. No, no, I'm not talking Oracle as a this uh, distributed Oracle. Okay, I'm talking conventional Oracle system. Okay, Oracle means I'm taking as a legacy system as an example. Although Oracle as itself is providing distributed system now. Yeah, the, the rollback system concept is absorbed, but the, still the rollback concept in Oracle is still is there. Yes, 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 it is still in there. In, so the rollback components which we have to assign and all, it is being taken care by an automatic uh, automatic way. Correct. I don't want to go into Oracle. I don't want to go into Oracle fundamentals, but yeah, that that's it is still there. The rollback never dies in any of the in DB2 or Oracle systems. So it has to be there. That is what yeah, it, it is. is the it fundamental is concept of RDBMS. It can't go. <laughs> yeah, it cannot go. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that that, that yeah. Uh, Omar is saying, as you said, one dot x yes, you have to go back into dot x. We, okay, we'll discuss this. Then I'll show you the block exactly the block diagram. Uh, Raji is saying, if the master goes down, the metadata will not be available. But what about the data? Who clears the data from data nodes? No, Rajesh, nobody is going to clear the data from the data nodes. Means your complete system is down. By the way, a very good question, Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh is asking if your master goes down, uh, who will clear the data from the data nodes. So Rajesh, there is no one to clear the data or there is no one to give the instruction, there is no one to do uh, anything or uh, even we do not also want this that our data will uh, be clean because we want that uh, eventually when my master node will become up, then I'll, I want all such data. Okay. That's nothing but uh, rollback. What? I, I understand. <laughs> That's why I didn't use that term here. <laughs> there is no term called rollback here. Okay. Let's go in deep dive into HDFS master. What exactly the master does? Although we discussed a lot about this before uh, the slide only. Understand this carefully guys. Master's book will be closed now. HTFS cluster consists of a master server that manages the file system. Understand this. Master doesn't do any work. It, it is a manager that manages the file system namespace. That is the complete metadata. And regulates access to files by clients okay so say for example a client is providing some sort of uh, data 
or any any uh, say um, uh, instruction to the uh, cluster it needs to interact always with the master because master is having the metadata it manages all the slave nodes and assign work to the slaves typical master slave relationship typical master slave relationship it manages all the slave nodes and assign work to the slaves it executes file system name space operations like op opening closing and renaming files and directories so guys uh, uh, the basic operations uh, that uh, how exactly this is happening that that I'll show you just in next few minutes only but yeah this is going to be executed from the master it should be deployed now main point it should be deployed on reliable hardware it should be highly available as it is a single point of failure in Hadoop 1.x apart from this okay let me firstly see there is anything okay no okay. fine apart from this uh, guys till now I was saying okay it is uh, metadata 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 is stored on master actual data is stored on the slaves uh, when a client need to interact with the cluster when client need to either write the data or read the data he need to interact with the master for sure now we understand this concept clearly now from the perspective of hardware I'm just giving one more point since I am having petabytes of data in HDFS that is on the slaves corresponding to those petabytes of data there will be GBs of data in the master GBs of metadata in the master although there is a concept there is a uh, rule that okay uh, based on um, this much uh, MB there will be uh, this much KB data will be there I'll show you that also figure I'll give you later but what I'm saying based on some data on these slaves there will be uh, petabytes of data there will be GBs of data on the master where does master stores the metadata all of you guys now I'm asking the question I have given you okay on the slaves I am having all my data stored on the master I'm having the metadata corresponding to that where exactly master stores the metadata correct good Rajesh appreciate your answers two answers correctly you have given wrong Mahendra wrong Uma Oh, Santosh, I, uh, surely it is storing on the master node only, but where? My question was this. So guys, for the fast retrieval of the data, name node keeps the complete data in the memory. It's very important point, very important uh, consideration. We need to have while purchasing the hardware name node machine should be have high RAM system high memory system because all the metadata is available in the RAM although there is a copy backup copy is available in the disk if it goes it goes down but it keeps okay let me remove the headphones it keeps complete data in memory the reason is very obvious no need to uh, discuss that reason if I'm putting keeping the data and uh, just disk there will be huge disk seeks and the, 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 the delay would be uh, going to uh, hinder the performance like anything the delay due to disk seek operation is going to reduce the speed is it's going to degrade the performance of my HDFS 
understand the case I am having hundred node cluster there are thousands of the clients who are giving the request either write request read request or processing request either read write processing request they are keep giving and it each request if my name no needs to go to the disk and then get the data oh boss you are out of out, out out from the race the system will not be acceptable getting my point all of you guys I'll take the questions just hold but this point why name note keeps the data in RAM by the way guys a good question um, for again first round of interview actual data Uma answering your question Uma is saying asking is the backup copy not the part of HDFS no the backup copy is the part of local disk of the master and why so that that will be answered in just next few slides again the answer to your question is the local copy the actual means the backup copy is stored on the local disk only not in the HDFS metadata is not going to store inside HDFS if I store the metadata in HDFS it's of no use because there are a number of different operations that will go on if I copy the data in HDFS. Uh, Rajesh is saying on secondary name node. Yeah, Rajesh, that, that I'll show you. It's how your data will be uh, getting backup on the secondary name node. That's totally correct. Uh, what Uma was asking that actual copy, that uh, the RAMS copy, RAMS backup copy, he was discussing about that. So I was talking in terms of that. But actually, from the perspective of actual backup, the data will be backup on the secondary name node surely correct point so I appreciate Rajesh that you have started doing some R&D some reading work okay Santosh is asking if I am having single master I am taking metadata backup if master node will fail I'll again upload the metadata and system start working uh, I, we do not need to upload the uh, metadata Santosh uh, there is a secondary master if you recall our yesterday's architecture if your master fails, I'm still talking about Hadoop 1.x, okay? In Hadoop 2.x, such problems are not there. If your one master goes down, there are two masters, suppose. If one goes down, second will automatically take over. But in Hadoop 1.x, there is a secondary master concept that there we are having the backup of metadata. But guys, there are some issues with, okay, let, let's note down. Uh, please note down an assignment. It would be again a good point to do research in Hadoop 1.x if my master goes down uh, Santosh if your second there is look, okay let me answer firstly all your queries if there is no secondary master then you do not have any backup you need to wait until your master becomes up or you need to copy the data from your masters uh, metadata and you need to make another system master that is a tedious activity uh, I'm asking, I'm saying that uh, we need a system. It's Hadoop is a system that doesn't need any downtime. But even if you do not have secondary master or in Hadoop 2.x, if you do not have multiple master, then uh, it, it, it's a big risk. And such type of system, frankly speaking, do not really exist in, in uh, actual practical scenarios in any industry. Everybody is having some backup systems. So the assignment that I'm giving you guys in Hadoop 1.x, if master fails, what will happen? How, how my system will become up? What are the steps involved in that? Is there any chances in the data? Is there any chances of the data loss? Please note down, I'm giving you 30 seconds. This is what, why, how, all such questions I'm asking for this. If master goes down in Hadoop 1.x. Okay, Rajesh is
<coughs> All right, let's move it. HDFS slave. Yeah, Shwini, there will be redundant name node as I have already told you in Hadoop 2.x. But in Hadoop 1.x, how will you handle this situation? Do some R&D. There is a reason behind that why I am giving you this as an uh, R&D assignment. Because you will come to know again few more terms that again tomorrow I am going to explain. HDFS cluster consists of number of slaves which actually stores the data. HDFS cluster consists of number of slaves which actually stores the data. They are actual worker nodes which does the actual task of read and write. Slaves are the actual worker nodes which does the task of actual read, write, process, etc. They are responsible for serving read and write requests from the file systems client. Since the data is stored there, they are the responsible for end to end all the things. Slaves also perform block creation, deletion and replication upon instruction from the master. Now guys, till now I didn't use this word replication. Still, I'll not show anything about replication now. I'll show in next few slides. So guys, regarding block creation, deletion, replication, all such things will be done on the slaves only from the instruction of the master. Slaves can be deployed on commodity hardware. Okay guys, our discussion in of previous went uh, somewhere else. So what I was trying to say there, just to conclude master's hardware also, it should be re deployed on the reliable hardware. Apart from that, apart from that, the machine should be highly available. The machine should be of high memory as compared to high disk. Now note down one point. The slaves should have more number of disk space, higher number of disk space. The master should have higher memory and no need of much disk space on the master. There is not a single byte of actual data going to be stored on the master. Okay, let's move in. Now, name node, the very first daemon for the storage, HDFS daemon, name node, we have shown you pictorially yesterday. Name node, this daemon runs on the master. Now, please note down guys this point. Name node stores all the metadata like file name, file path, number of blocks, block IDs, block locations, number of replicas, slave related configurations, etc. As discussed, MinNode keeps the metadata in memory for fast retrieval.
Anish, is your window open? Oh, somebody is speaking. Just a minute. Yeah. Hey Anish, is your window open? There is a lot of noise coming in. No, I have stopped. I have stopped once again. I started uh, switched on AC. I again stopped. Oh, okay. No, I, mean, I, I hear a road noise also. Like is it? Uh, no, it's not from my end. I'm not getting it. Just a minute. Let me check if anybody has unmuted him. Mm. Is anybody else also getting any disturbance? Now? No. Uh, Omar, nobody else is getting any disturbance. I hope now you're also not getting. Okay. Okay. The second daemon that is data node. Data node, this daemon runs on all these slaves. So when we run a specific command on all these slaves, that is JPS command that I'm showing you in the workshop. On all the data nodes, there will be an output of the JPS command as data node. Data node daemon must be running up and live on all the data nodes. All these slaves. Data nodes actually stores the data. No. Now, a few important points the actual storage pattern of HDFS what happens when a file is stored in HDFS it is broken into small chunks when a file is stored in HDFS it is broken into small chunks the default block size is 64 MB the default block size is 64 MB These blocks are stored on multiple nodes in the cluster in distributed manner. Since data is stored distributedly, it provides a mechanism for MapReduce to process the data in parallel or distributed manner over the cluster. Yesterday also I asked a question, who split this file? A file is stored in HDFS, is broken down, who breaks this file? I think Rajesh answered correctly yesterday. Rajesh? Correct. Client. Correct Mahindra. Client API. Now in these blocks are stored distributedly over the cluster. Since data is stored distributedly, it provides a mechanism for map reduce. Guys, from the first day I'm saying map reduce is the heart of Hadoop. But to provide all such power to heart, we have HDFS. Without HDFS, really map reduce were of no use. Since my data is stored distributedly, that's why only my MapReduce can process their data distributedly. Okay, next point. HDFS stores multiple copies of data on different nodes. I'll take your questions, just hold for two minutes. HDFS stores multiple copies of data on different nodes. Now guys, when I am copying a data, I am copying a file of 1TB. Look at this, by default three copies of blocks are stored. If I am storing the data of 1TB, it is going to store three copy. It means three TB space it is going to occupy. Understand this. This this is an important term. Little hard, little tough to digest. 
when I am storing any data inside HDFS. Say for example when you copy your data to local disk on your Windows system. Suppose you copy a 1 GB file. It will occupy 1 GB only. But in Hadoop, firstly it will create 3 copies. Okay. So what it will uh, going to occupy? 3 times. That is 3 GB space. Now guys can you recall all such properties like fault tolerance, reliability, high availability. I was saying a machine goes down then also my cluster is up. I was saying that slave is failing then also my data will be processing. I was saying that my if my slave even uh, are burnt and then also my uh, data will be uh, accessible. I can process, I can read or write just due to replication just due to the application. Just a minute, okay. A very large file. Suppose take this file, uh, size of this file is 100 terabytes. When I need to store this file inside HDFS the file will be splitted now you'll ask me who will split this file client will split this file who what will be the client now guys it's important concept usually people do not understand what is a client client means I am not a client I am not going to sit and code and split it client doesn't mean my laptop is a client what is a client what is a Oracle client or what is a Hadoop client Again, if you compare, don't go in, going in the wrong direction. My Hadoop itself is acting as a client. Point. Please note down. My Hadoop itself is going to act as a client and all the Hadoop's API will be used as a client API to split it. All the configuration files are going to be read. All the metadata is also going to be read. Firstly, it will read the configuration files also to decide the block size. In the configuration, if I have decided for 128 MB, it will divide the blocks uh, of size 128, 128, 128 each. All of you guys, very important point. Please write a three star mark line. In actual interviews, people will uh, make you round and round. A very good question from the perspective of interview, from the perspective of certification. My large file divided into blocks. Who divides? My Hadoop will divide. Hadoop setup, Hadoop machine, Hadoop client. If say for example, if you are having Hadoop client now, a, a, a very valid question. Nobody asked although. Uh, a valid question. Suppose I am having this master, all these slaves. And I am having my client setting somewhere else. There also I'll be then how my data will be splitted. So guys, there also I'll be needing a Hadoop setup, complete setup there, just uh, as a to act as a client. Is this clear, guys? Then I'll I'll go to the application. Can you explain more on who and how it is broken? I think I have answered Uma's question. Mahendra. Santosh, Rajesh, Ashwini, Venkatesh, 100%, any question? Uh, Rajesh is asking when. Rajesh, as soon as you run the command for copy. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain you full end-to-end -end process. Just uh, who, who does this? Just uh, trying to explain you. Again, again explaining you this. This is an important point. I'm, I'm, I'm in no hurry until unless it is 100% clear. I'm having a huge file. I'm having a huge file. Okay. So this huge file is available here on my personal computer. It is available here with my personal computer and I want to store this data. I want to store this data, this file into this Hadoop cluster. 
so suppose here I am having 100 slaves there is a 100 slaves a very big cluster I am having 100 slave cluster I am having a master, secondary master and all so I am sitting on this laptop okay I'm I'm working and I want to copy this data on my Hadoop cluster what I'll do I need to interact firstly with my master then I'll start copying the data this process I'll explain you how exactly I'll copy the data but now understand this how the blocks will be divided HD setup that is available here the same HD setup that is Hadoop setup I'm writing a short form HD will be here the same Hadoop setup will be here the same Hadoop setup will be here that will be acting as a client for me that will be acting as a client for me and it will be responsible it will be responsible for split up of the file into blocks and it will keep sending the blocks to the cluster how these blocks will be uh, sent to the slave 1, slave 2, slave 3 uh, we'll see, we'll see but just first understand who is breaking and how it is going nobody frankly speaking guys nobody will explain you this even when I am taking the interviews of 15 plus years experience guys they also do not understand this all of you guys is this clear who how when my data is splitted but I got lots of smileys but few are still pending Ashwini Vangtesh Uma should be now 100% clear So guys, once these blocks are created, this file is splitted into blocks, my blocks will be travel to sleeves. Now, look at this. Now I'm trying to show you, oh sorry, now I'm trying to show you here my block one is available multiple times although there is some issue in the animation just a minute let me okay block one b2 is available here as well as here understand this point carefully user has copied the block one block two block three and so on user has copied all these but it is not like it is just a one copy is available block one is available here as well as here what I was saying at any point of time if this machine fails no issues I'll access block one from here I'll access block block four from here important point although I'll explain the same in the it's a dedicated slides it's a dedicated time next session but by default three copies are there first copy here first second copy here and third copy somewhere else suppose here guys getting a glimpse getting a idea of how Hadoop is fault tolerant how Hadoop is reliable
this is the actual foundation that should be strong you know, I should say pretty strong means uh, because on the top of this we are going to build a big multi-story building okay that's good now so guys look at this HDFS architecture so so I'm just end to end firstly and if you have any questions anything then we'll discuss when case your questions answer will be here okay understand this this is my client what we have seen as a client okay client is having some data client need to interact with the name node every time whenever it want to do any operation whether the operation is read write or processing or any work job whatever it want to do it will interact with the name node since name node is having the metadata now if a client want to write some data if a client wants to write some data to my Hadoop how it will write how it will write will my data go via my name node all of you guys a question to all of you will my data go via name node uh, who am I saying will the data flow via name node okay I got one correct uh, two correct answers Uma Mahendra guys question is will data go via name node Venkatesh Ashwini the answer is no the answer is no you guys understand this why understand you should have the answer of every why if all the data go via the name node now imagine the volumes understand the volumes we are not talking volumes of MBs GBs volumes in the range of petabytes hundreds or thousands of petabytes if I'm having say hundreds of clients copying hundreds of petabytes of data is it feasible to go via name node is it feasible to go even can we think of this that my data will go via name node we can't really imagine that so the answer is no my data is not going to flow via the name node what happens when a client needs to write or read something he need to interact with the name node about the metadata name node will tell it give the information back whatever information client wants he can get from the name node client will directly go to data nodes and write or read the data from there all of you guys please note down again a three star mark line all the data flow from client to Hadoop cluster goes directly to data node not via name node are you getting the reason although I'm saying okay it is going via this it is going like that but why the reason is if it go via this my name node will become the bottleneck I'm going to use the name nodes network like anything firstly and secondly name node can't have that much network that it can handle thousands of clients now why I have shown you this uh, figure th uh, there is few other reasons each data node is having its own local disk copy look at this each data node is having its own local disk copy so data node 
is ultimately storing the data at its local disk. That is inside HDFS only. Whatever I am storing inside HDFS, that will ultimately HDFS it is a, at application level, but it will go to the local disk somehow. Anyhow, it is going to store the data at the local disk, so they they are going to store their local disk. Now, there is a term called heartbeats, important term, heartbeats. All the data nodes keep sending the heartbeats to the name node. All the data nodes keep sending the heartbeats to the name node. What this heartbeat is going to say? A very small message that it is going to send to name node and saying that boss I am alive. I am alive. That's it. Just from its name only it should be clear that what message heartbeat is giving. Now the question what happen if data node won't send it the heartbeat after certain amount of time name node will consider that particular data node as a dead this data node is failed name node will consider automatically so if it doesn't receive the heartbeat in the given time name node will think that data node in the question has been crashed name node will check in its metadata now guys understand its background operation what will happen okay name node got oh this data node is fail okay name node will check in its metadata okay what all the data blocks are available in this data nodes okay this orange one green one, green one and this matter this uh, uh, red one uh, these blocks are there okay blocks suppose 3 7 and 100 these three blocks are there 3 7 hundred. as soon as client will send a request to read block number third as soon as client will send the request to read the block number third name node will check okay yes block third is available on another node either this or this depending on the availability block uh, name node will give the access of the block from another data node. Suppose this data node. Understand this concept clearly. Since name node is having namespace, name node is having all the metadata, name node will redirect the read instead of the data node 1 which has been crashed, it will send to the live data node where the data is available. Balancing of the cluster will see with time. Replication also will see with time how replication is happening, how exactly the replication will happen. Now, guys, again a good question to research. Understand this point clearly regarding replication. Although the last slide, the second last slide of uh, this PPT is having the answer of the same, which I can't cover today. You can clearly see three copies of block. Okay, if you do not really understand the colors, I can make the numbers also for you. Block number one, block number one, block number one. Okay, suppose block number two, two, and two. Okay, now you can clearly see I am having three copies of all the blocks will client send three copies of each and every block or will it send just one copy or Hadoop will then Hadoop will make the desired copy later all of you guys please note down this question is the question clear at the end system on the Hadoop cluster I am having three copies being a client I need to send three copies or just one copy I got one correct answer appreciate this 
so guys by the way based on the performance from the answers uh, there is a tough competition between two guys Mahendra and Rajesh the award watch what we discussed yesterday student of the batch so Rajesh and Mahendra is performing like anything in the research that they are doing and the uh, reading work that they have started appreciate this do some research all of you guys I got few correct answers I recommend to do some research over this now the last point of this figure my secondary name node periodically keep pulling the data from the name node but guys secondary name node is not a uh, I can't consider this is a good option even it's not just an okay option it's not a satisfactory option for the backup of name node because it periodically pulls suppose the, uh, uh, the the period of pulling the data is 30 minutes and at 29th minute name node will fail I'm going to lose the data of 29 minutes I'm going to lose the data of 29 minutes right now you'll say you'll ask me why don't you decrease the this period make it one second so guys that's not feasible because it would be very costly and it will make name node very heavy it will make name node very busy standard time from lots of research is 30 minutes not less than even 30 minutes that's why it was a big issue in Hadoop 1.x that's called single point of failure please note down the question what is single point of failure although I have already answered the same I'm expecting all of you guys to note a write-up to give a write, uh, to, to prepare a write-up for these assignments till now I was expecting just do basic research but uh, especially means um, even I shouldn't say to a specific guy I, I, I recommend to all of you guys to, to give uh, say five bullet points at least five bullet points even I frankly speaking I do not read much uh, paragraphs if you write your uh, bullet points in your own language minimum 5 10 50 20 whatever you think that for honest for a specific question I am ready to invest time to read your answers and if required I'll correct you you can mail me the answers as in when I get time I'll uh, uh, check that and I'll revert back that uh, if there is any issue Venkatesh did you get answer of your question all of you guys is everything clear whatever we have discussed till now if I can get a smiley <laughs> okay I got lots of smiles thank you so guys let me show you a glimpse of what we are going to cover in next few sessions your um, all these things all the curiosity will be uh, solved so we are going to discuss after this the features of HDFS uh, my main concern will be to answer your all the questions of what how where why distribution of blocks distributed storage actual blocks what is blocks it's an application high availability data reliability fault tolerance scalability high throughput access to application data so we are going to discuss distributed storage blocks we are, I'm going to show you how exactly the block placements what are the policies behind the block placements then we are going to see their application and uh, there are again uh, a number of uh, things behind their application also what ideally what should be their application or uh, where should be their replicas are placed a number of things are there then high availability regarding high availability and data reliability we are going to see okay what happens if this node fails and how exactly the data will be accessible then we'll see fault tolerance scalability scalability although we'll dis we have already discussed a little bit but we'll again discuss high throughput access to application data a very important concept important points then 
the uh, last topics that is file access and other operations how we can access file and other things file read operation how what is exactly the internals of file read and file write operation so how exactly the file is going to be write, uh, written and uh, what operations are happening in the background when you run, when will you run a simple command and then we'll talk few other um, key terms that's rake awareness then the final HDFS architecture which is covering A to Z the complete details of HDFS alright guys that's it for the day if anybody is having any questions who will keep the track of data on failure master Ashwini master will keep the track of data not failure